I bought this shiny new 64 gig Steam Deck and I'm going to fix everything that's wrong with it. The most obvious part is the storage. The 64 gigs of eMMC that comes in this is far too small and slow to be a good experience. So seeing as I already have one of these Keoxia BG4 one terabyte single chip 2230 M.2 SSDs around, I'll be installing this straight in before I've even booted the deck. The other major problem with the Steam Deck is its joysticks. Now, the stock ones are fine, but being potentiometer based, they will eventually get stick drift. And since I'm opening the deck anyway to replace the drive, and since these Ghoulie Kit magnetic Hall Effect joysticks are relatively cheap at about £30, I'll be swapping these in too. Let's crack this open and get to it. Opening the deck is remarkably easy. It's four short Phillips screws in the middle and four longer ones on the outer edges. Then a bit of careful prying with some plastic tools and you get the back cover off. Now you will need to peel this bit of sort of foil tape up to remove the screw that's below it and then two on the top and bottom left edge of the, the metal cover and then the cover will come off. The very first step after it's off though is disconnecting the battery. You can pull on the tab or in my case I had to very carefully use some tweezers to push the connector free. Once that's out you can unscrew the M.2 drive swapping the RF shield over to your new drive. As for the joystick, joysticks, well, you just need to remove the ribbon cable from each one and then remove the three screws that hold each joystick board in place and, well, it just pops out. Now, to replace the joysticks with the new Ghoulie Kit ones, there is one extra step that you'll need to do and unfortunately, it involves a soldering iron. The joystick cap has a soldered wire that allows the deck to know if you're contacting the, the joysticks and that cap needs to be transferred over. That means you'll have to crack out the soldering iron to remove and then reattach the wire to the new board on both joysticks. I found I had to turn my iron up hotter than I would normally use it at, and I'm almost certain that my old cheapo iron that I used to use wouldn't have done the job at all, so be warned. It is worth noting that if you're buying the official potentiometer based replacement joysticks from iFixit, they come with new caps pre-installed, so you don't need to worry about this step. Once the caps are on though, or you've got your replacement parts, the installation is the exact opposite of removal. You just drop it in the hole, install the three screws, reattach the ribbon cable, and then you're done. Remember to connect the battery and reinstall the shield and then carefully clip the back piece or the back panel on and install those eight screws and then you're good to go. Now obviously since I removed the old OS drive, the deck is now devoid of an operating system. So you will need a USB stick, either a USB-C stick or a USB-C hub to plug a regular drive into and you'll need another system to make that USB stick a bootable drive with the latest copy of SteamOS on it. You can get that from Steam's website and if you're on Windows you can use a tool like Rufus to write the image to your stick. Then plug it into the deck and boot up. Now since the USB stick is the only bootable device, it should boot straight to the sort of setup menu, although if you happen to just want to reinstall your operating system with an existing drive in there, then what you need to do is hold the volume down button while you tap the power button and it will boot into the boot selection menu and you can pick your USB stick from there. Once it boots on the sort of desktop, there will be a few icons in the top left. I'm using the re-image deck option. This takes a fair while, and in my case, there was a bit of uh, sort of difficulty with getting it fully up and running. Uh, I made the deck restart once, and then I had to uh, kind of mess around with the updates so that it actually installed everything properly, rebooted, and then I could get it set up like normal. Once it's up and running, the next thing to solve is emulation. Now, because of a certain company, I can't show you absolutely everything here, but I'll show you what I can. I'm using EmuDeck, a brilliant tool that installs everything you'll need to emulate anything from an N64 to a PS3, and yes, even a Switch. 
run through the setup as normal. I'm using the internal storage for this as I've got more than enough space and I'm also using the standard install options. Now a custom install would let you disable or not install some of the emulators if you're not going to use them but I'm not too bothered here so just as standard. Once it's all installed you will need a few extra things, specifically BIOS files, encryption keys and ROMs. For example on the Switch, if you have an early model Switch you can use a tool to basically jailbreak it and extract the encryption keys from that device. If you don't have one, say you have a Switch Lite like we do or none at all, you'll need to find the prod keys and title keys files somewhere. These aren't exactly hard to find, although I can't link you to them directly, but trust me, they're not that difficult. BIOS files and firmware files are also available on the same site for the Switch that you'll find the keys, and uh, other consoles are available from a pretty simple search too. As for the ROMs, again, you can make backups of your game cards, or you can use publicly available copies. Again, I can't link you to any of these, but Again, trust me when I say they're not hard to find. Now, you will need to switch into the desktop mode, which involves pressing the Steam button, power, and then switch into desktop, uh, so that you can then open a sort of file explorer window, navigate to your emulation folder, which if you chose internal storage, will be under home, or if you chose SD card, it will be in your SD card. And then inside the emulation folder, you will find folders for BIOS files and ROMs. Inside the BIOS folder, you can drop your switch keys and firmware in the appropriate folders inside the Yuzu folder, and any other game consoles you fancy, you can drop those BIOS files in the relevant places too. You want to drop your ROMs in their appropriate folders as well. Uh, warning for Switch ROMs in particular, XCI files, aka cartridge dumps, work a lot better, at least in my experience, than NSP files, aka eShop rips. NSP files can still work, but from my experience it's about a 50% success rate, so I'll leave that one up to you. Also, NSZ files, which are the sort of compressed or smaller file sized NSP files, don't seem to work at all. Once everything is copied into the right folders, you can then launch the Steam ROM manager, click preview, then generate app list and save app list. Once that's done, you can close it and then use the return to gaming mode shortcut on the desktop and you should find all of your newly installed games in your games list. I should note, with a few tweaks, Steam now has native support for Joy-Cons as both a single and paired configuration. So yes, you can play with actual Joy-Cons. They just pair via Bluetooth, although you do have to switch back to desktop mode to be able to change the setting that sets them to a single uh, sort of joint pair or two separate controllers at least for the moment. So that is my new one terabyte Steam Deck with Hall Effect joysticks. It's an emulation powerhouse and I'm absolutely loving it. The various input methods for all the different types of games, the handheld design and the pretty decent performance makes this an amazing machine. Of course, if you are replicating this build, you might be better off with a 512GB SSD instead of, you know, spending like over £200 on just the drive itself but I'm incredibly happy with my purchase. I would consider potentially at some point in the future replacing the display with the 512 gig etched screen version, sort of matte type version, but for the time being, I'm perfectly happy with this sort of glossy screen. And actually in some cases, especially in bright lights, glossy tends to work a bit better for reflections because matte tends to just spread it all out and make it a bit more difficult to see. Whereas as long as you can avoid the specific direct sunlight or direct you know lights uh, it's not normally too bad but either way those are my uh, sort of thoughts on it my tweaks but if you already have a steam deck what have you been up to with it what sort of games have you been playing and if you don't have a steam deck is this something that you're planning on you know picking up when budgets can afford it or is it not for you is it something you'll you'll pass on for now and maybe wait for a, a second more powerful version or something like that feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have any suggestions for other things that I should do with my Steam Deck that don't involve cutting a hole in the back and putting a big heatsink on it, thank you Linus, uh, then I'll uh, feel free to, to leave those in the comments as well. If you want to see more videos like this one, including more with the Steam Deck or, you know, just standard tech reviews, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. 
Uh, I'll do my best to leave some of the links that I can in the description, including link a global Amazon affiliate link to the Hall Effect joysticks if you're interested. And feel free to check out plenty of other videos on the channel. You can also support the channel through YouTube, Patreon, or picking up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other affiliate links that are in the description down below. Otherwise, that's kind of it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.